What's going on in Walkerville area in Windsor, Ontario? If you're curious why it's getting more and more popular and also if you want to know if it's a good fit for you to either move in or invest in that neighborhood, then stay tuned. Namaskar, Adavar Se, Vanakam, what's up everyone? Hope you guys staying home and safe. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification for an awesome content regarding real estate, investing and Windsor and many other topics related to finances and also my personal journey as a realtor and investor. If you have been following me for a while, you know what I'm gonna ask you. Hit that thumbs up button because if you don't, then YouTube doesn't like my videos. It doesn't show it to potential people who are looking for this information. So please do me a favor. And in this video, I have a special guest actually who is an investor focused realtor who is working with me in my team, uh, Win City Real Estate. Also very knowledgeable, very smart guy who worked as a you know property manager. Also like, you know, he owns a bunch of properties. Now he's building a first tiny home in Windsor. So this guy has a ton of knowledge. Uh, that's why I'm bringing him to share about Walkerville area. So just stay tuned. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Clark Alley, investment realtor with the Wind City team, as well as Windsor's first tiny home developer. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite neighborhoods in Windsor, the Walkerville area. Today, I'm gonna to touch on four points on why Walkerville is my favorite neighborhood. The first point I'm gonna dive into for Walkerville is the history of Walkerville. Um, I'm sure a lot of local Windsorites will know the Willistead Mansion and Willistead Park of Walkerville. This is kind of the central core of Walkerville. It's actually where Hiram Walker, um, kind of the founder of the distillery district, um, all kind of the big brick brown buildings you see along uh, you see along Riverside and Walker there. Um, this was his mansion. This is where he you know poured all of his riches into and kind of built this huge mansion where he would host some parties. You know have a lot of you know kind of local um, local other kind of rich business people come and hang out at his mansion. So Windsor has put a lot of money to keep in the historicness of this property and the park in really, really great shape. So that park itself and all the homes around it have much, you know, a lot of character. Um, it really dives into the history and really what makes Walkerville uh, Walkerville. Um, and another great thing about the history is the Paul Martin House um, on Ontario Street. Now, Laverne, um, I'm sure you know some of you guys have seen the CNN article uh, of Laverne that actually restored the Paul Martin house um, to you know bring some modern texture and kind of modern technology into the house, and you know kind of really brought out its historicness to the property as well. And another great thing about uh, about the history of Walkerville um, is on Argyle Road. You'll see Argyle Road is actually quite wider than than other streets because um, that's where the old uh, the old train actually used to go go across when there actually was you know kind of a train and trolley set up there. So if you go, you know, down the streets of Walkerville, you'll start to see the history really pour itself through and through, you know, Windsor's, uh, Windsor's kind of historic, uh, historic development funds, it really kind of kept all the historic nature that Walkerville has to offer, um, you know, with new developments and new modern technology kind of bringing it, uh, bringing it to today's, today's standards. So the next thing I want to talk about is the schools. Um, you know, a lot of people look at Windsor and in South Windsor, they look at Massey, you know, as being kind of the top, you know, math and tech school. Um, now, when you look at Walkerville, Walkerville High School is kind of the top arts and, you know, creative arts schools to go to. Um, so, you know, if your kid wants to go into music, wants to go into any kind of dancing and arts, uh, creative arts, anything like that, Walkerville is the premier school for to send your kids, uh, to, send your kids to. And now the next greatest thing about Walkerville is the restaurants. Um, Kildare House, you know, Walkerville Brewery, there's a lot of Twisted Apron. There's so many restaurants in the Walkerville area and it's really becoming, you know, the trendy part of, of Windsor. Um, you know, there's a lot of 20 and 30 year olds are kind of moving there, going to these restaurants on evenings or weekends. Um, Windsor is actually, you know, putting forward its funds to kind of develop the whole Walkerville downtown section. So we have the Windsor downtown as well as the Walkerville downtown kind of on the Windout Street there. Um, so you can see, you know, the Kildare House, the Walkerville Brewery. Um, there's just so many great places to kind of hang out on that Friday or Saturday evening um, that it's it's really kind of becoming the new trendy part of, uh, of Windsor. 
And the last thing that I really like about Walkerville is the developments. Um, in my opinion, if there's new multi-million dollar developments going on in an area, that shows that, you know, not just from a local real estate investor, you know, like you and us doing the fix and flips or doing the burrs, but more larger capital intensive projects that, you know, require these big construction teams, um, support from the city of Windsor. Um, it really takes a team of people to pull off these projects are happening right here in Walkerville. Um, for example, the historic power, uh, Walkerville Power Building right on Riverside there, um, that's getting turned, you know, that's been sitting vacant for such a long time. Uh, developers came through and, you know, they're turning the whole main floor into retail and I think believe they're turning the second and third floor into main major office space. Um, this is probably one of the biggest historic developments um, that has gone on in the Walkerville area. Another big development is the, uh, is the Market Square on the corner of Ottawa Street and Walker. Um, so it's got the Market Square there, it's got the Sharpest Drive. Mart, but behind there it was actually a big industrial building and they turned it all into apartments I believe it was 20 22 or 28 apartments that got you know the highest rent for the apartments in the area um, they just did a phenomenal job um, another project you can see where it actually turned you know an industrial building into more of a residential space more you know gentrification densifying the area um, you know shows another another great sign of the area developing is right on the corner of Walker and I believe it's Wyandotte um, across from Tim Hortons there so that used to be uh, Hiram Walker's old distillery, distillery district. It's big, you know, it used to be a big brown uh, brick building. And they turned that all into Walkerville lofts. You know, some of these lofts are reaching six, seven hundred thousand dollars to buy one of these condos. Um, unheard of, you know, in Windsor to reach condos at that level. But that just goes to show how much gentrification and densification is happening in the Walkerville area. And in my opinion, why you see these higher price points and people kind of moving to this area. Um, it's trendy. There's new developments going on. You know, really nice restaurants, nice school. Um, just in my opinion, one of the one of the great neighborhoods that Windsor has to offer. Now, from an investor point of view, Walkerville is really interesting. Um, right around the Willistead Mansion there, it's actually close to 80 to 85% home ownership. So this goes to show that a lot of the people that purchase the property there are homeowners. You know, they take care of their property, they take care of the neighborhood. So as an investor, when you look at something like this and you know, you wanna take a property and turn it into a rental, you know that the area is majority home ownership and cares for the neighborhood. Thus, your property will also be cared for kind of in proximity to the other homeowners in the area. Um, so from an investor point of view, um, you're kind of looking at, you know, anything from, let's say 250 to 300,000, um, you're going to maybe purchase something in there with the intent of, you know, fixing it up a little bit, um, you know, putting some capital into the property to turn it to maybe the average single family home in the area of more 350 plus. Um, so you're going to, you know, find something a little discounted, bring it up to that value and, you know, maybe rent out a single family detached home, three bedroom, two bath, anywhere from 1500 to about 2000. Um, so, you know, it's going to return you great cash flow. You're going to pick up something that you can put a little bit of work into um, and know that the return is going to be there for a long term. Uh, maybe you're looking at a burr or just a long term hold. Um, it's going to retain that value compared to the other properties in the neighborhood as well. So, if you're looking at a more small multifamily, Walkerville actually has quite a bit of multifamily properties to offer. Um, so, if you're looking, you know, a small multifamily, maybe anywhere from two to two to six units around there. Um, you can kind of look at a one bedroom from anywhere from, let's say, 800 to 1100. Um, a two bedroom from 1000 to 1400 or a three bedroom from 1200 to 1600. So if you're looking, you know, any multifamilies around that area, um, specifically in the Walkerville area, you can kind of attribute around those rents to roughly the properties you have, you know, depending on quality, of course. Um, but you know, you know the location's great. You know people want to live in the Walkerville area. So filling up that vacancy definitely will not be an issue.